Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to discuss how to improve your odds of getting into a quant program. So I'm gonna leave this as quant program as a general term for the fact that you could be going into financial engineering, uh, computational finance, risk management, a lot of those are all the same. And then also you have um, data science and other like grad school programs in general. They will focus on similar areas. So this is really applicable to all masters and PhD programs but there will be some focus more or less on those who have highly quantitative backgrounds. So I believe there are two areas of the application. There is the quantitative side and there is the qualitative side. So as you can see here, there are actually four different areas in the quantitative, four in the qualitative. We're gonna cover each of them, but just to give you kind of an idea here, the quantitative is GREs, uh, the GMAT, depending on which exam you take, uh, transcripts and GPA, and also what school you went to, your TOEFL, and uh, any designations. The qualitative side will be your resume, your statement of purpose, uh, letters of recommendation, and the interviews. So the quantitative side is something that's typically easy to adjust in some ways, but somewhat hard to adjust in other ways. So for example, uh, your GPA, the schools you went to for undergrad, those are things that are fairly fixed. Like you can't go back and fix those and change those. So I wouldn't even worry about those. Those are what they are. There's nothing you can do about it at this point. If you're an undergrad and you're working towards these degrees, you're wanting to know what to do in undergrad to prepare yourself uh, for these masters, uh, and you haven't selected a major, selecting a major is going to be a crucial point in your application. So having a major like in, I don't know, English or poetry or history, uh, is not going to set you up as well as having a degree in mathematics, applied statistics, um, something like that, something more quantitative such as physics. And then this falls into the transcripts portion again. How well did you do? Is your GPA high? Is it low? Um, typically, if you're in the application process, it's like your senior year, it's a little too late. If you're younger, freshman, sophomore, you really need to buckle down and get a good GPA because once you create that GPA, that's going to go on to all your transcripts for graduate school, both in a master's and a PhD level. So for your exams, like your TOEFL, your GREs, and your GMAT, let me just first off say most programs prefer you take a GRE over a GMAT because a GRE is more science and math based, where the GMAT is more business focused and a really good quant program typically are not business focused. So taking the GMAT, yes, a lot of them accept it now. Uh, I don't think it's a really good advantage for you to take the GMAT. If they offer both, I would definitely take the GRE. So for both the GRE and your TOEFL scores, these are things you can affect. You can take these over and over again. Yes, universities do see different scores. I know when I took the exam, whatever scores you had, they provided all of them to the school. Now I've heard that's a bit different with the GRE where essentially you can pick your best score or your best scores and present those to the universities during your application. Uh, but again, these are easy to fix. Just retake these exams, study for them. I studied for like three months before I even took the GRE. Um, I'm from the United States, so I didn't have to take the TOEFL, but many of my classmates all have to take the TOEFL, and so they practice for that as well. And last on this list is designations. So the CFA, the FRM, those are probably the two big ones. Um, if you're either working towards it, which most of you will be working towards it as you haven't got a graduate degree, um, it's good. It's good to list that on there to state that, you know, in your resume or the other portions of your application, if you can put it on there, that you're already working on these designations because having the designation and working towards the designation just helps give you a little bit of a bump, but it's not a make or break. So if you don't have the designation, you don't have the time to start working on the designations, don't worry about it. All right. So those are all the quantitative sections. Those are pretty easy. Um, again, they're just factually based. What school did you go to? What's your GPA? What are your test scores? Uh, and if you have any designations, it's cut and dry, black and white. It's very factual, very quantitative. So the hardest part, I think, for any application, for any graduate program is the qualitative side. So first off, many programs ask for a resume. So writing a resume, whether it be to get into graduate school or applying for jobs, you can present one person who has their set of skills in many, many different ways. And depending how you write the resume, depends how you look. So I would focus on what the program's looking for, go in, read what they want. Um, for example, if you worked at both a math major and you also have like an English major and you're a dual major, uh, really play up the math major, present that in the resume. If you have work experience related to that, pitch that. 
But again, in your resume, whether you are applying for grad school or you're in graduate school and you're applying for full-time jobs, really showcase your education. Um, I know a lot of students think like, oh, if I just had you know a year or two years of experience at a hedge fund or a private equity firm or in risk management or something, I would look great and amazing and I would nail these jobs. I'd be getting offers left and right. That is not true. People that are hiring graduate students, um, graduate programs who are looking to get undergraduate students, they're looking for strong students. They're not looking for people with experience. If they were, they would go somewhere else to where people have more experience and already have the graduate degree plus the experience. So really focus on the education part in your resume. And again, really write it towards the applications and towards what you're actually working for. And this leads me to the second one, which is the statement of purpose. The statement of purpose is huge. So your resume should essentially tell a story somewhat. You should see where you've been um, and where you are now. Uh, the statement of purpose is kind of like your elevator pitch, which I have a video on. I'll put a link below to give a little more detail on that. I made it a long time. The quality is not great, but it'll give you a good idea. But your statement of purpose will give you basically where have you been in the past? Where are you today? And where are you going in the future? And it's not good enough just to write that out. You need to have a coherent story on essentially where, why, what have you been doing in the past that's building you up to this point to going to graduate school? And then after you go to graduate school and you work on that degree and you obtain the designation, what's going to happen after graduation? Like, what are you working towards? And this separates candidates, I think, with the exact same scores. If you have same, like, GREs, TOEFLs, same universities, all that, the statement of purpose is what really drives, I think, great candidates and, like, mediocrely average candidates. And I've even seen candidates, at least in my opinion, people I've worked with, people I've talked to in different programs, who seem like they don't have a very strong background, but their statement of purposes, which I have read, were very strong. They had a very you know, defined goal, what they were working towards, how they were getting there, and it was written very well. Having that on your statement of purpose as part of your application, having a great statement of purpose can define basically whether you get accepted or rejected from a program. So again, the quantitative skills are important, but again, those are easy to define. Lots of people have them, it's an easy scale. Having the statement of purpose on the other hand is very difficult because it's qualitative skills. It's how you pitch your story, how you write your story, and how you present yourself. And then the third one in the qualitative skills is the letters of recommendation. So I actually just talked to a university professor who works in a master's of finance program. Uh, that program is actually tied to a financial engineering and risk management program. And they were discussing how it's kind of awkward and weird when a student contacts you and they're like, hey, um, I'm looking for a letter of recommendation. Can you write me one? And then you don't really even know who the student is. Like you're thinking, what, what year was that student in my class? Which class did they take? You know, I don't really know them. So my advice is if you're in like your junior, sophomore year or whatever, even in your senior year, I guess, is when you want a professor, like you have a really well-known professor, you've taken a class from them, their recommendation, if they're a great professor, and especially if they're well-known in the industry, but even if they're not, is building a relationship so they can actually write you a good letter of recommendation. Trust me, when people are reviewing these transcripts and like your application and they see like this most generic letter ever written by a professor, I'm like, this person was a good student, they had good grades in my class, I recommend them for this program. That's boring, it doesn't do anything for your resume. But again, don't blame the professor because they can't write one for you if they don't know you very well. So to fix this, I would actually go talk to your professors. Like if you have two or three professors you're thinking about having write you letters of recommendation, and hopefully you do this before your applications by a year or so, I would talk to them, sit down and ask them and say, hey, you know, I'm Dimitri, um, I've taken this class from you, and I'd really like to go to graduate school, I'm not really sure what I wanna do. Or I really wanna go to graduate school, I wanna work on a degree in financial engineering, uh, would you mind talking to me and giving me some advice on that, right? Get their opinion, talk to them a little bit, get to know them. Then when they go to write your letter of recommendation, they will be able to write more about you because they know a lot about you, they've talked to you at least, you know, three, four, five times, they've had had you in class, you've stood out as a student, and they can write a very detailed and well-written letter of recommendation, which will help increase your chances of actually getting the offers from all the different graduate programs. And lastly, the fourth one here on the qualitative skills is the interview. So I wouldn't say this is with every program. Some programs have interviews, some programs don't have interviews. I know when I applied to one of the programs, 
Uh, I actually had to do a video interview like this. This was way before my YouTube days. I was very awkward. I was like in a stuffy suit that was a little too big, like awkwardly sitting in this chair and like trying to give more or less my statement of purpose in a video format. And I think it took the place of also the statement of purpose, but also the interview process. But if you interview, you wanna to try to come off as like relaxed, um, excited about the program, excited about the materials. You don't wanna just be like robotic, and I know it's very hard to do. So I would recommend if you're going to have interviews for any of your applications, is practice an interview with a friend or a family member. Um, just sit down face to face like an actual interview and just have them read off some interview questions and then try to answer those questions. Think through those questions before you do the practice one. Uh, and then think about it after you do the practice one and then try to go back and review basically how you did, how you answer them and if they sound good to the questions. So kind of try to think about a lot of the interview questions you're going to get and how you're gonna answer them in an actual interview. So again, the quantitative skills I believe are a little more cut and dry, a little easier to improve. You just retake exams and tests to get that. If you haven't done so well in your undergrad, this is something that's hard to fix. If you're a senior now, if you're in an under, like lower level, like a freshman, sophomore, even a junior, you still have a little bit of time to help improve your grades, your GPA. But again, all of the gains I feel like where you should be spending your time is on studying on those exam scores. And then also looking at the qualitative portion. And this is something that's very, very difficult for most people in quantitative fields and sciences is that we don't focus a lot of our attention on the qualitative sides of life. We focus everything on the quantitative side. Everything is mathematical, everything is cut and dry. We need a reason for why things happen. But when you apply for applications, what sets you apart as a candidate is going to be these soft, qualitative skills that are harder to develop. And just to wrap up this whole kind of advice here on focusing on the qualitative skills is that Programs are looking for students who are going to finish their programs, do very well in their programs, and go on to get great jobs. The reason is it helps their program with better rankings because they can say, you know, you made more money when you came out, uh, you have higher placement rate when you graduated, so 90% of our class was placed within one month, you know, 100% was placed within three months. These programs are looking to make money, and the way they make money is having good program stats, so they're really looking for candidates who are well-rounded and will be easy to place in the job market. So I hope you guys find those tips and tricks kind of helpful on like how to prepare for the application process. Yes, there's a lot of qualitative work that needs to go in this. A lot of things you need to think about before you actually do the application, and there's a lot of groundwork you should be doing, you know, two years, three years before you even apply for these programs, and that's really getting to know your professors, really thinking about where you want to go in life and where you want to be in five, ten years. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, list them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell button next to the subscription button. And as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.